Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial on the new model builder node for Nuke 7. My name's John and in this video I'm going to show you how to create and manipulate geometry using the edit mode in model builder. When you create a model builder you start off in a line mode. If you hook up some footage to the source input and a match move camera to the camera input of model builder you can use the align mode to create geometry and line us up to your shots. There's also a geo input here. Now that allows you to pull in geometry with vertex normals to assist in positioning objects. Take a look at our tutorial on alignment and positioning to find out more about how to do this in align mode. Now you can also work in edit mode to create geometry directly in the 3D viewer. I can select a new shape and position on the ground plane here using a single click to create and dragging to set the size. If you hold down the shift key you can also hit test against existing geometry when creating your shapes. So I can click on the cube and place a cone. On the top toolbar you can switch between the display settings for the geometry. One trick to remember is that you can switch on the headlamp in the viewer settings if you want to work with a solid display. Let's switch back to working with wireframe. Now on the left hand toolbar, you can see there's a shortcut menu to choose between the different 3D selection methods. If I choose object selection, I can go and pick up my shapes and move them around using the translation handle. A good trick here is that if you hold down Command and Alt or Control Alt, you can pick up the pivot point and move it in the scene. You can also locate it on geometry. So now I can scale up from the corner of this cube. You can also rotate that pivot point. If I hold down Command Alt Shift or Control Alt Shift, I can rotate that pivot and now I have a new handle to translate or scale or even rotate. One thing to remember when you're working with selection is that by default the viewer will test for occlusions. If you want to select back faces or back edges, for example, you need to disable the occlusion test in the viewer here. Now you can go in and select through the object, so I can pick up some back edges. Once you have some geometry to work with, you can access all the editing operations through the right-click context menu. Here you can switch between the selection methods as well as the mode you're working in. And you also have a set of actions that can be performed. And this is dependent on the selection method. So in vertex selection I can carve, extrude and bevel. In edge selection, I can carve, extrude, bevel, subdivide. There's also some handy shortcuts here to select edge loops and edge rings. In face selection, I can carve, extrude, merge, bevel and tessellate. And finally, in object selection, I can carve and I can also mirror. Use mirror, for example, to model symmetric objects by modeling one half first, duplicating and then mirroring. Let's look at an example. If I go to edge selection and select this edge and then subdivide, I've started an edit action. This will bring up the editing controls on the top toolbar so I can modify the action and when I'm happy I can complete using return. You can also hit escape to cancel. So here I've inserted some extra vertices on the edge. Now let's try doing a bevel action. If I select this edge and then bevel I've now brought up the controls and I can set the roundness, this controls the number of edges, and the size, the size of the bevel. And I'm going to use escape now to cancel. Let's have a look at carving now. If I start a carve action, I can click on my geometry and insert additional vertices to cut out new geometry. One thing to watch out for here is to make sure that you click on your geometry rather than outside when inserting the vertices. And a trick you can use is to hold down Command and Shift or Control Shift to automatically insert vertices as you drag over the geometry. And as before, you can use Return to finish a carve action or Escape to cancel. Now the final thing I'm going to show you is that in face selection there's a shortcut key for extrusion. So here you can use Return to quickly extrude a selected face or set of faces to quickly build up your geometry. 
So that's the basics of geometry editing. Let's see how we can use that to do some clean plate work for this shot. I want to build some geometry and do some projections. I have a model builder node connected to my footage and a match move camera. So I need to set it up for the shot. Let's review the camera move. So you can see the scale here is around 100. So I'm going to have to go in and update my far clip plane for the viewer. Let's use 10,000 there. And I also need to set the distance parameter on the model builder node. I like to use 10 times the scale as the maximum distance I need to work with, so a thousand here. The first thing I want to do is model a back wall. So I'm going to use the alignment mode to place a card and lock it down to the shot. The tutorial on alignment will tell you how to do this. So what we're going to do is place a few corners and then skip forwards. So we've aligned these corners and now we have a card locked to the shot, but that's on the window pane. So what I'm going to do is place a point as a locator on the wall. Then I'm going to pick up my card on the window pane, scale it up and get it into position for the shot. Then I'm going to switch out to 3D and then move the card from the window pane onto the front of the wall. So now I have a card on the plane of the wall to work with. I can then edit this card to model the shape of the wall. The first thing I'm going to do is line up the edges of the card to the window frames. You can use drag select or hold down shift to do multiple selections. You can also use alt and shift to remove from a selection if you need to. A handy trick here though is to select a single edge and then use edge loop selection to quickly pick up the edges so that you can place them. Now you can see I don't have enough edges in the card for the window frame here. So I'm going to insert some vertices by subdividing these edges and then I'm going to use carve to connect the new vertices together. So now I have a new edge to work with, I can pick that up and move it to the right location. And finally, I'm going to place this edge for the windowsill. To create the inset windows, I can switch to face selection, select these faces and merge them so that I can pick each one up extrude it back and position on the back window pane again. So now we have our inset windows and we have the geometry we need for the back wall. Next up I want to create some geometry for the bed. So I first lock down my geometry using alignment and here I'm going to start with a card on the top of the bed. So I position the corners and now I have a card positioned next to the wall and I can switch to edit this to create the shape I need. So I pick up that front edge and extrude it down and then I pick up the corner edge and bevel it to create a smooth shape. And this gives me the surface of the bed. Finally I'm going to model the fan on the bed. I'll use alignment to position a cube over the front face of the fan so again we position the corners and once we have a cube I'm going to go in and edit, select the edges and use bevel here to create the roundness of the corners and now we have the fan. Now we have all our geometry let's see how that looks in 3D. You can select from the model builder and hit bake scene selection to create a separate node. You can also use create projection to create a projection group for a particular frame. Here's one I've created before for frame one. So what we're going to do is take our baked scene geometry, hook it up and render it out with a scanline render node. So you can see that in just a few minutes we've aligned and edited the geometry we needed to set up some projections for this shot. And we did it all inside Nuke using the Model Builder node. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.